Good day and thank you for standing by. Welcome to the Photronics Q2 Fiscal Year 2022 Earnings Conference Call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. After the speaker's presentation, there will be a question and answer session. As a reminder, this conference is being recorded Wednesday, May 25, 2022. I would now like to turn the conference over to John Jordan, Executive Vice President and CFO. You may begin. Thank you, Tanya. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our review of Photronics Fiscal 2022 second quarter results. Joining me this morning are Frank Lee, our recently appointed Chief Executive Officer, Chris Progler, our Chief Technology Officer, and Eric Rivera, our Corporate Controller and Chief Accounting Officer. The press release we issued earlier this morning, along with the presentation material which accompanies our remarks, are available on the Investor Relations section of our webpage. Comments made by any participants on today's call may include forward-looking statements that include such words as anticipate, believe, estimate, expect, forecast, or in our view. These forward-looking statements are based upon a number of risks, uncertainties, and other factors that are difficult to predict. Actual results may differ materially from those expressed or implied and we assume no obligation to update any forward-looking information. At this time, I will turn the call over to Frank. Thank you, John, and good morning, everyone. I would like to begin this morning by stating how honored I am to be with you today as the new CEO of Photonics. Since joining the company in 2006, I have had create and lead our operation and strategy in Asia, including the formation of two joint ventures with the Nippon Printing Company and also the recent geographic expansion of our operations into China. Turning to the financial results, we once again deliver a second record revenue in the second quarter improving 8% sequentially our strong end market demand, the further price realization across IC segment, and also the continuous production ramping up of our Sherman and Hefei operations. In addition to the top line growth, we expand our growth and operation margins. Growth margin was 36% and operation margin, 25%. The net result was EPS of 49 cents. Cash generation was also strong as we end the year with $247 million in net cash, which position us to continue investing in profitable growth opportunity. As CEO, I fully commit to continue our organic growth strategy, the revenue growth and the margin expansion. And also, we'll keep exploring additional growth initiative. For revenue growth, the growth is achieved by winning more share in a growing market right now. We have been working closely with our customers to meet their needs in technology and capacity roadmaps. We are building partnership with several key customers. And we also sign many long-term purchase agreements, so-called LTPA, with our key customers. This kind of approach serves us very well to make it a critical investment, and it helps us to quickly re get return on our investment. Our recent IC and APD operation into China are a very good example of this approach. As the market leader, Fortronis has become a trust partner and key supplier of our customer in both IC and FPD. 
In addition to revenue growth, our profitability has been improving continuously. This is achieved by the very execution of three major key items, the product mix optimization, the effective cost management, and operation efficiency enhancement. On top of these actions, we have implemented some pricing adjust strategy based on current market supply demand in balanced uh, situation. My third commitment is to explore new strategies to further our growth initiatives. I've been very involved in this process since joining Fortronics. We have a very good relation with our customers, vendors, and value partners through our Asia. With the emerging trend of global supply chain restructuring, include IC manufacturing localization, such as made in USA. Photonics will solidify our activities and relationship in these other agents, in other geographics. I'm very certain that with our strong existing global footprint, and a successful experience in Asia, we will be the far ahead winner in this business, in our business. We have performed very well through the first half of 2022, and we are on track to have the best year in the history of the company. I am very proud of our team, and together, we will continue to outperform beyond 2022. Thank you very much. And this time, I turn the call to John. Thank you, Frank. Good morning again, everyone. Second quarter was another record quarter for Photronics, our fifth consecutive record quarter. Revenue improved 8% quarter over quarter and 28% year over year as demand across the board remained strong. We're executing on our growth strategy by investing in technology aligned with market drivers and partnering with customers by establishing long-term purchase agreements that enable us to quickly and profitably ramp new tools while maintaining high utilization on existing tools. This quarter is another proof point that that approach is working. IC revenue grew 12% sequentially and 30% year-over-year on strong global demand for our photo masks. High-end demand was driven by foundries in Asia and U.S. as semiconductor content in consumer goods continues to increase with more chips in electronics, automotive, appliances, and many more applications. New designs continue being released to satisfy this demand. Advances in communication infrastructure, such as the rollout of 5G, are another catalyst in demand growth. This proliferation of chips is a driver of photo mass demand and for photronics. As use of semiconductors continues to proliferate and demand growth continues beyond the capacity to supply it, it creates a change in pricing environment primarily in trailing edge masks, but also in the high-end business that is helping us to further expand margins, which I'll discuss in more detail later. FPD was down slightly quarter over quarter, primarily due to a decrease in mainstream LCD. High-end was slightly higher thanks to continued strong mobile demand. Growth in displays for mobile applications offset a decline in G10.5 uh, larger mass demand. We expect demand to remain strong for AMOLED and LTPS displays used in mobile applications, some increase in G10.5, and continued reliable demand for mainstream LCD displays. Revenue from products shipped to China customers achieved another record quarter, improving 8% sequentially and 58% year over year. We are the clear market leader in this growing region. 
our past business development and operation expansion initiatives are reaping the benefits we anticipated. Gross and operating margins improved during the second quarter, benefiting from the high leverage in our operating model and well-demonstrated discipline in keeping costs low. Gross margin of 35.7% and operating margin of 25.5% are both well within the long-term ranges we communicated in February. We fully expect this business environment to continue well into the future. We have based our investment plans on that expectation, and we anticipate that the increased margins will be sustained by the demand supply imbalance due to limited trailing edge capacity. Our target model, which will take us into fiscal 2024, has been updated to reflect these new growth opportunities and is included in the supplemental slides posted to our website this morning. Our approach to these target models is to be realistic without being aggressive, although in retrospect, consistently improving business conditions in the photo mass space and our execution have suggested that the model should be updated. The updated target model layers in only the revenue increments anticipated from our currently planned CapEx investments and the pricing opportunities provided by continuation of the current business environment with consideration at the low end of the target that at three years into the strong semiconductor business cycle, the risk of a downturn is increasing. Income tax provision increased due to the increased earnings and net income to non-controlling interest increased with the strong performance of our joint ventures in China and Taiwan. Changes in foreign exchange rates resulted in an $8 million gain in other income, equivalent to approximately $0.07 cents a share. As a result, diluted earnings per share were $0.49. Cents. We strengthened our balance sheet during the quarter with cash and equivalents increasing to $329 million and debt decreasing to $83 million, resulting in net cash of $247 million. We generated $44 million in cash from operations and received $10 million in contributions from our JV partner for IC capacity expansion in Asia. CapEx in Q2 was $16 million and we received a little over a million in government subsidies for investments in China. This brings our total CapEx for the year net of subsidies to $33 million. We still expect CapEx of $100 million in 2022 as we increase our mainstream IC capacity and increase the size of our facility in Taiwan. Before I provide guidance, I'll remind you that our visibility is always limited as our backlog is typically only one to three weeks and demand for some of our products is inherently uneven and difficult to predict. Additionally, the ASPs for high-end mask sets are high, and as this segment of the business grows, a relatively low number of high-end orders can have a significant impact on our quarterly revenue and earnings. Given those caveats, we expect third quarter revenue to be in the range of 205 to $215 million, driven by a continuation of favorable end market demand trends across both IC and FPD. Based on those revenue expectations and our current operating model, we estimate adjusted earnings per share for the third quarter to be in the range of 45 to 55 cents per diluted share. As Frank said, we're on track to deliver the best year in the company's history with strong end market demand, strategic capacity expansions, higher profitability, and a strong balance sheet to support further growth initiatives. Business conditions and execution by our team across the organization brought us within the ranges of our previous target model and support new projections. Achievement of that new target model will continue to create and deliver more value for our shareholders. I'll now turn the call over to the operator for your questions. 
Certainly, ladies and gentlemen, if you do have a question at this time, please press star, then one on your touchtone telephone. To withdraw your question, please press the pound key. Please stand by while we compile the Q&A roster. Again, ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star, then one on your touchtone telephone. One moment. And our first question comes from Patrick Ho of Stiefel. Your line is open. Uh, thank you very much. And, and, Frank, first off, it's good to hear your voice, and congratulations on the job, and best of luck going forward. Uh, maybe a first question on the demand environment. Uh, obviously, that looks very healthy, uh, you know, moving forward in, in both mainstream and high-end ICs. Uh, are any of the recent uh, Chinese market volatility uh, changing your outlook, at least in the near term, in, in terms of, you know, potential uh, pullbacks in that region, then, or, or are you still seeing continued strong demand uh, in, in the IC market in China? Thank you, Patrick. Uh, the Shanghai city in lockdown initially has uh, slowed down all the business activities uh, in China, especially in the Shanghai area. So we do see some new product table slow down uh, initially. However, the situation has been uh, gradually recovered, and recently we see the new order, new table start to come in. So uh, I think that there's an impact, however, it's short, and it should be uh, fully recovered already. Great, that's helpful. And maybe as a follow-up question for John, uh, obviously the operating leverage uh, was excellent this quarter, uh, as well as uh, it, was, it was a nice, pleasant surprise to see the new target model. I guess what gives you confidence, because you were looking at some, you know, new target model metrics of, you know, over 40% gross margins, uh, you know, 30% operating margins, you know, the, uh, you know, numbers we've never seen from, uh, the photo mask industry as a whole. Is it more the pricing aspect or is it uh, the demand and just the revenue growth that's driving this improved margin leverage? Uh, good question, Patrick, and essentially uh, yes to all of the above. Um, so the, the I call it the business environment, but it provides us a lot of opportunity for uh, pricing that we haven't we've never had before. And we've got, uh, as, as Frank mentioned, uh, we have long-term purchase agreements with uh, many customers, uh, some of which we've kind of renegotiated, and there are others coming up for renewal. Um, some, are, some are one year, some are longer than one year. And as they come up for renewal, the prices, uh, you know, the opportunity is still there to continue uh, the price increases. So. A lot of our locations are at capacity, so we're, the operating leverage is um, you know, outstanding from those locations, and then the opportunities created by the business environment um, to improve pricing, uh, we expect to continue well into the future. And I think you know, you, you've read the same things that we've read, and most of what you read uh, supports that assumption. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. And our next question comes from Hans Chung of DA Davidson. Your line's open. Hi. Um, hi, Fred. John. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Congratulations on strong results. So um, our first question, just um, can you elaborate more on the pricing adjustment um, during the quarter, like, uh, like, like where uh, – uh, is across the board, or, and what, what what kind of magnitude, and then uh, where are we now in terms of the the pricing? How much room can we further to increase um, going forward? Hi, Hans. Uh, uh, nice to meet you, and thanks very much for the question. Um, so we don't we don't generally talk about uh, 
you know, the specific amounts of uh, pricing adjustments because it's it's really competitive information. Um, but we've been able to increase prices in the mainstream pr uh, primarily because there's such limited capacity uh, and the, domain, the, the mainstream demand is expanding um, so, so ubiquitously just because of the use of, uh, you know, non-leading edge chips in everything everything we do. But we've also had opportunity to increase our high-end pricing as well for, for similar reasons and because of our uh, technology leadership. So, you know, without, without talking about specific amounts or percentages, um, you know, the environment is there and we're able to take advantage of it and, and we expect it to continue going forward. I hope, did that answer the question? Yeah, 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 that, that helps. Thank you. And then uh, I guess the follow-up is, um, so as we, we uh, move to our new target model, right, and then with further higher margin, and that will be also assuming uh, further uh, the price increase over time. And to, just, just to get a sense, like, to, to what degree that uh, the, uh, in terms of pricing, uh, we might start to see that our customer may start to consider turn to the captive, the options. Um, I know I know that might be not economy at this moment, but just try to get a, get a sense like how far are we to there, and I mean if we can hit the the, the our target model like over forty percent margin. Yes, uh, you know uh, right now the. The capacity issue, we believe, will last uh, into next year at least. Uh, the main reason, of course, uh, is the long lead time of the equipment. Same as uh, wafer fab equipment, our photo mass equipment uh, to deliver time has become very, very long. So uh, the demand increased a lot. However, on the supply side, it will take time uh, to provide some capacity to the customer, to the market. So we believe uh, the price uh, increase, uh, there's a very high possibility uh, it will continue into uh, next year. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thanks. And, and then, as I might yeah. also uh, kind of supplement that with um, a comment about the, the captives uh, photo mass business as well. With the the amount of investment uh, and resources required for the leading edge uh, chips these days, the captives are reluctant to invest in mainstream capacity, and they're also we we understand they're also inclined to start outsourcing more of that mainstream uh, demand, the mainstream uh, photo mass business. So. You know, we're looking, we haven't incorporated any of that into our model, but we fully expect that to also be an upside uh, to the model. Got it, got it. That's helpful. And then uh, last question, just uh, regarding the capacity, um, as we, are, we continue to expand our capacity, so what would be the capacity run rate in terms of revenue by the end of this year? And then... Uh, I guess just assuming, um, I say uh, by end of this year, what, what will be the the this, this, uh, deficit level in capacity to market in that um, uh, existing that, uh, this year? Okay, so the, so the um, our guidance for next quarter, and one can assume we don't give full year guidance, so. Uh, we'll have to draw an assumption about fourth quarter um, and into next year is based on the additions to capacity that we've already incorporated into our CapEx budget for this year. So as those tools, those new tools come online, we've incorporated the revenue, the incremental revenue from those tools into our, into our guidance expectation and into our uh, target model. So what we've forecast is essentially capacity uh, to the extent we, we have it and continue increasing it. 
there are some locations that are that are not operating at capacity, and that's based on you know the geographic demand profile. Uh, but for most of our locations, they're operating at capacity. That capacity will expand as we add those those this year point tools in mainstream, and then next year uh, high end tools. I might want to point out on uh, that. I, I mentioned it in my comments, but our long-term model, target model, is based only on the capex that's in this year's budget, and some of which will be delivered in next year. But there is no capex, additional capex, um, that we would plan for next year in addition to what's what's already ordered from this year or 2024. So one can expect the capacity to increase for those CapEx additions, but again, those are not, not incorporated into our target model. Got it, got it. Good. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Hi. And our next question. Our next question comes from Gus Richard of Northland. Your line's open. Yes, thanks Good for morning, taking my Gus. questions. Um, great quarter. Um, could you just um, give a little color on, you know, the sequential increase in revenue? Was that mo mostly price, or was there some volume component to that? It was it was uh, both, mostly price, but some volume. Okay, and then in terms of the uh, long-term purchase agreements, is is that still primarily FPD, or is it starting to spread out into into the IC business? Actually, it start with uh, IC uh, because we do have uh, this kind of agreement with uh, certain key foundry customer for several years. Uh, but right now, we are expanding the customer base to sign the contract. So at this moment, it covers both uh, IC and APD customers. Okay, got it. And uh, just roughly, how much of your revenue is is under uh, long-term purchase agreements? Um, yeah, we, we don't we don't really we don't really report that number, Gus. Uh, it's a it's a pretty substantial amount, uh, especially in Asia. Okay, got it. And then um, I think this is the first time I've heard you mention high-end pricing in proving. Is is that correct? And you know, is it beginning the price increases in the high end, beginning to catch up with mature, or can you talk about the, those two segments of IC, you know, and sort of how they're behaving? Yes, uh, the price increase actually started last year uh, in the mainstream market. Uh, however, the capacity uh, shortage situation started to migrate into high end IC area also. So uh, in this year, we start a negotiation with the key high-end IC customer, and the new price start effective, become effective in at the beginning of uh, Q2. Uh, I, I understand. Thank you. That's very helpful. And then, um, in terms of capacity utilization, um, you know, an IC mature versus mainstream. Are, are you basically both of those running flat out now, or do you have incremental capacity in the mainstream? We are building the incremental capacity step by step. Uh, however, as I mentioned, the tour lead time is uh, becoming an issue. So the capacity incremental uh, is uh, has to be done quarter by quarter, but uh, not at a, the same time. Uh, I see. And then last, last one for me, um, you know, in terms of the foundry outsourcing, um, I, I'm sure they're busy with EUV masks. Um, you know, sort of are they outsourcing, you know, 14 nanometers and above? You know, sort of where is is the break point on, on what they outsource and sort of how, how do they think about um, – you know, what, what they put out into the merchant market? The amount of outsourcing from captive house increased year by year. And uh, 
uh, with the growing demand in the high end, the captive are also short of uh, mainstream and middle end capacity. And we do have a customer talking about uh, some kind of uh, long-term outsourcing uh, agreement. So we are in the process uh, talking to customers uh, about this kind of uh, outsourcing strategy. And keep in mind, Gus, the outsourcing uh, by the foundries is not uh, limited to mainstream. There's also, uh, we also do high-end work for foundries. Right. What I was trying to get at is, are, you know, are they, you know, I think you're capable 14 nanometers, and I'm, a, I'm wondering is, is their outsourcing up to that level? Yeah. 14 yeah. Um, is there any plans internally to to be capable of doing like a 10 nanometer mass set, or um, you know, I think that's the or or no, or or certain layers. Chris, Chris, you yeah, want to Gus, respond I, to like, that? Uh, yeah, I can make a comment, Gus. If 14 logic is pretty healthy outsourcing among the foundry captives. And uh, the IDM, so that node is, you know, pretty well placed into commercial mask making. I would say the seven, eight nanometer node just uh, starting to uh, look like qualifications will will initiate. So maybe some started last year, uh, some will continue this year, and uh, we have capability for those nodes as well. Can you do the UV mass blanks as well, a max as well, or or just the the other layers? We have an EUV process. Uh, we you know, since 2017, we've had a joint development agreement with IBM uh, in New York. So we build all of their uh, EUV masks. That's you know, admittedly kind of a pilot line, but they go through full uh, device demonstration, full yield down to kind of 28 nanometer pitch, which is five nanometer node class mask. So we have a solid, I would say, front end EUV capability in photronics, and we're delivering those masks, not in huge numbers, but in higher and higher units every month. As far as an EUV really transitions to commercial mask making at large, uh, I think that's still a couple of years away. Um, we're seeing kind of the tier two people now put in EUV tools. By Tier 2, I mean the second adopters uh, are putting in single-unit EUV systems. So it's starting to become a little more pervasive, but it's still fair, fairly narrowly confined to a small number of designs. And, uh, of course, uh, the large, the big three, uh, everybody knows, TSMC, uh, Samsung, and Intel, for EUV, they're still building most all of their mass internally. So... I think we'll get there. Uh, we watch the market closely, and we evolve our capability uh, thanks to the IBM partnership. But I think probably at least three years out before the EUV goes full commercial. That, that makes complete sense. Thanks so much. Yeah, sure. Ladies and gentlemen, there are no further questions at this time. I would now like to turn the call over to Frank Lee for closing comments. Thank you. Thank you for joining this morning. Photon is in a great position, and we are continuing to move forward, and we will achieve our long-term goals. I'm very confident that Photonics employees across the world will continue to exceed expectations by delivering quality product and outstanding service, helping us to achieve our long-term target. I'm looking forward to meeting and speaking with many of you in the near future. Having a great day, and thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the conference call for today. We thank you for your participation and ask that you please disconnect your line.